All right, so welcome to this next video, five tips on bringing in your virtual students. So again, many of us have this ex experience of we may have students physically present, we may have students uh, virtually present, and we're sometimes uncertain about the degree to which they're engaged, especially if their video is off. And so this video is just trying to think about how we might bring them in a little bit more and look at what are ways to do that. So the first is actually just with the student, with the students themselves, everybody in the class, ask that question, have that discussion. What does it mean to be present? Uh, this would include engaging students about what presence should be. What does it mean to show up to a class, especially if you're virtual? How do they, how do people know that you are there and that you are present, that you are engaged? Uh, discuss, you know, this, this discussion of what responsibility do they have to each other as a community? Right, so class is a community of learners. They're people that are building upon one another's knowledge, they're sharing ideas, what responsibilities do people have who are, who are showing up virtually to be an engaged person in that space? Especially again, if, they're, they're, uh, if their video is off, if they're not engaging in the chat, if they're not coming off mute, like how do you make sure they are part of it and have the class decide, have the class discuss what that looks like? Uh, and in this case, it would be a good opportunity to identify what will be good and concerning examples. What are things that you feel demonstrate this as well as have the students ide identify what are things that they would identify as you know that's an example of somebody being present and demonstrating their presence that's an example of somebody that you know maybe checked out and we may have to raise a question about that uh, here again you know kind of build upon that and have students set expectations ask them what the norms of the group should be what is it that it, you know, what is it that they should be doing if they are virtual? What are those expectations? Are, you know, are they allowed to have, or I shouldn't say allowed to have, but can they discuss, you know, should they have other things open? Should they be doing other things? Should they be, you know, cooking dinner while they're also at class? Uh, what does it mean to be on or off video? What is, what are the communications or the norms about that? Um, if they're silent, should they act, should they be active in some other way, such as in the chat? Uh, should there be times which they know they can come off of mute and discuss or share their additional thoughts? Uh, is there any room for, for, for exceptions? What might be reasons, you know, they can this one time be at the grocery store and also ch chiming in or, or listening into class? Um, and so, you know, give that time. Should individuals get a group approval for certain for some of those exceptions as well? So really trying to give them the pathway to have a responsible negotiation, because these are, you know, these are definitely skills that would be important to develop and to engage one another about, and also things that they will want to think about in their work environments and their other social environments, you know, with other types of groups that they belong to. Uh, and then there's the good question of, you know, how to call in students not meeting that, those expectations. So again, this is a discussion to have with the class. Ask them how do they want to be held accountable, right? So if students aren't meeting the expectations, what's the point that either other students, the class as a whole, or the instructor should actually step in? And, you know, as the class discusses this, and, and maybe it comes up with individual plans or a blanket plan, but take note and approach accordingly, kind of use the class to, to leverage what is responsibly way of calling them in. And within all of this, you know, the thing I want to emphasize is framing this. Um, this can very easily fall into the realm of, how do I, like, this can very easily fall into the realm of, uh, over managing students, or this can be very much a, an attempt to control students or an attempt to uh, get students in trouble. You know, th there's a lot of negative, negative connotations around this. There's a lot of deficit thinking. Um, so as you frame it either to the students themselves when they haven't met those expectations or in the discussion as a whole, really be thinking about how this can be framed in a way that is recognizing the importance of everybody being there and everybody being part of that group and what contributions mean. Uh, I know in you know, my classrooms, I always try to explain 
they're going to learn as much from their peers as they are from me. So it is important everybody shows up and everybody contributes. Uh, so kind of thinking of it along those lines and be thinking about it along those lines when engaging with students who aren't meeting expectations that the group has set up. Um, when you do have a student who seems absent, right? So they, they show up in the Zoom, but they're, they're not necessarily... Uh, they are not necessarily on camera. They are mute the entire time. There's kind of the sense of they're, <laughs> you don't even know if they're there. I think the first is just to have the conversation with them and to try to understand their why. Uh, and this means this is a one-to-one -one conversation. This is a conversation which you try to see, you know, what is going on with that student. Uh, within that, you try to understand and, and get them to share you know, if this is the manner in that they're attending, what are they getting out of class, right? So sometimes they are, they may still say they're getting things out of class. They are, they are learning certain things, but this is also an opportunity to wonder or, or hear if they are able to take anything out of class besides, you know, the, the quote unquote check mark that they have arrived, but really use curiosity, use, you know, the sense of, wanting to understand where and where, where the student is at and what's going on to understand what they're doing here. Um, and then within that conversation, you know, asking them how they feel they are meeting the group expectations, especially if you've had that previous conversation. And then the last is actually brainstorming accountability with them rather than you saying, you know, you should do X, you should do Y, you should do Z, really, you know, asking them, well, how can we make sure, or you know, what would engagement and being accountable to the classroom look like? Um, so again, you know, there are obviously some ideas we've already talked about or are ideas out there. Be active in the chat. Another one is writing up or recording reflections on class. So if they can't be active during the class itself, uh, have them write up a reflection. If they could, you know, do a recording, audio or video that they send to the instructor or to the class later that shares their thoughts because maybe they are able to listen but not chime in, but maybe they can still contribute after afterwards. Another, you know, another idea might be, you know, identify with a the student. These are the times in which, you know, I will call on you to contribute, you know, at 7.05, at 7.30, these are times when, you know, you will be expected to have the floor as it were. Uh, and then the other is, you know, and I've seen this work as well, which is connect with other students to talk through class. So this might be having an accountability party or having somebody to check in with after the class, somebody that they're comfortable with to have a conversation about, you know, what they had heard while listening, and also what are some additional ideas or ways they want to expand upon, you know, that conversation with this other person. So those are just a couple activities, but I would really encourage, you know, I, I would say put these out there and also ask your students what, you know, what would be useful or how can they hold themselves accountable in a way that feels right both to the student and to the classroom and the cohort. So those are my ideas. Uh, I hope they are useful and please let me know if you have others. I would love to share them. Thank you so much.